name of High Holy Yama peeps, what am I doing? Yeah, I've had to do some things I'm not proud of. Hey everyone, Captain Leon from Captain Leon's Boating and More, and let's just call this Winterization Wars, right? We have had numerous conversations on Yamaha forums and Facebook pages about how exactly to winterize these boats. And you know what? Everybody has an opinion, everybody has a different technique. It doesn't make it wrong. You just have to do what works for you. I think that if we're gonna to try to come to some conclusion here, and I think it's something we could all agree upon, is Yamaha engineers have provided the actual criteria and the guidelines for winterizing these boats. That's what we should do. We should follow those guidelines. And if you wanna go beyond that, you wanna do a little bit extra, you can. That's up to you, as long as you're doing no harm. So in this video, and it's gonna be a pretty short video, I just wanna spend a few moments just discussing what exactly is the certified Yamaha techniques for winterizing these vessels. And where do we get that information from? Well, of course we have our owner's manual, okay, which comes with our boat. And if you don't have your owner's manual, you really should acquire it. Uh, and secondly, there is the service manual, which gets into more depth, and this is what your Yamaha certified mechanics use. Uh, additionally, there's a tech exchange bulletin that was released on how you fog these engines, particularly the 1.8 liter, uh, both supercharged and naturally aspirated. So, you know, let me just say this. Um, I have a video that I did many years ago uh, and I'm going to I'm going to link it in the description below um, or uh, you could probably just hit this link up here. Um, you know, it, it's quite extensive and it goes into a lot of detail about a lot of things that I do as part of the winterization. Um, you know, is it all necessary? Absolutely not. Uh, am I a certified Yamaha mechanic? Absolutely not. This is just what I do. And if you choose to, to take some of those steps uh, to make it your own, uh, so be it. Um, is it all necessary? Probably not. Uh, with that being said, let's just dive into right now exactly what is necessary. What is specifically recommended uh, by Yamaha? All right, so starting with the service manual, and again, you know, this service manual is for an AR-190, SX-190. Uh, you know, your service manual might have different information in it, so just be mindful of that. You know, this is just for my boat, uh, but I'm sure a lot of it is similar. And, you know, looking at the manual, and I'll just save you the time, you know, I've gone through the whole manual, and uh, yeah, guess what? I mean, while of course there is the section on general maintenance, uh, there is nothing there that speaks uh, directly toward uh, winterization. Now, now let me just say this: the word winterization, we all we all like to use that word because generally that's a time of year that we we put our boats away. But long-term storage, that's right long-term storage is really the true technical term when we talk about the steps we want to take to put our boat away for a while so again not much in here at all doesn't mention long-term storage does not mention winterization uh, at that point we're going to turn to our owner's manual so yeah here in our owner's manual under care and storage we do have a section known as long-term storage Right, and that's going to cover the fuel system, lubrication, and grease points. All right, so very quickly, our long-term storage direction is storing your boat for prolonged periods of time, such as winter storage, requires preventative maintenance to ensure against deterioration. It is advisable to have the boat serviced by an authorized Yamaha boat dealer before storage. And here we go, folks. However, that's you now. The following procedures can be performed by the owner with a minimal minimum i should say of tools so look look how look how uh really uh short this section is we talk about the fuel system and adding of course uh they're recommending fuel med rx but really we're talking about uh some sort of fuel stabilizer for your fuel uh and then they talk about lubrication and they recommend under lubrication it is advisable to take the boat to a yamaha boat dealer to have the engine fogged for long-term storage so clearly fogging is imperative 
is in fact what's recommended by Yamaha. Uh, grease points uh, to keep the moving parts sliding, rotating smoothly, right? Uh, and they talk about the throttle cable, the steering cable. And if we move on over uh, to the very next page, we ended off by just talking about where to grease the pivot points. Uh, they recommend some grease in the bearing housing, uh, and that is it, right? Then, the, then it just gets into general maintenance. So uh, guess what? <laughs> There's not a lot here. There is not a lot that you have to do to these boats for purposes of long-term storage or winterization. I think it's safe to say that the only real uh, significant step you want to take is fogging the engines. And this Tech Exchange Bulletin uh, discusses how you fog the engines. Uh, it's a very simple process. It's, it's, it's far simpler uh, in a naturally aspirated engine than if you're going to do it in a supercharged engine. But um, yeah, I'm just going to take a, a couple of minutes here just to show you uh, how quickly it is to fog this engine. I'm in the middle of uh, putting my boat away for long-term storage right now, so you might as well join me as I, as I take this step. So we're here in the boat and, and basically the fogging procedure is really just two steps, right? Uh, at least for the naturally aspirated engine, which I'm going to cover here because uh, that's what I have, a naturally aspirated engine. And the two steps are quite simple. One is uh, we're going to remove the, the air box, right, and the air cleaner. We're going to shoot the fogging spray into the air intake while the engine is running. We do that for a period of time. The engine will cough a little bit, but it really coats all those internals in the intake, uh, you know, with the fogging oil. The second step is more uh, focused on the internals of the engine. Uh, so here we see fog the engine internals. And the way we do that uh, basically is we're going to remove the spark plugs um, and it's, it's fogging the, the combustion chamber directly is what I'm going to do. Uh, removing the spark plugs from each cylinder and spray the fogging oil into the holes for approximately five seconds each to ensure that the fogging oil will be deposited onto the piston rings and the piston ring lands. So, so that's, the, that's our goal, those two steps, uh, spray through the air intake and then the actual combustion chamber itself. And look, yeah, there are definitely different fogging oils on the market, Starbright, others. Look, if you're going to do it, you might as well just use the Yamalube uh, Storite engine fogging oil. It's designed for these engines, not to say that that other products, uh, you know, don't have what's needed, but you might as well just use it. I bought this on Amazon. You know, it's not cheap. I mean, you could spend up to $18, $19 a can, but uh, hey, so be it. If you're doing it yourself, you're saving a lot of money on labor. So to access the air intake, we're going to, of course, remove this uh, breather hose here. And that's just a question of compressing the spring clamp. Uh, I'm also going to loosen uh, this bolt right here, which uh, is going to be able to loosen up this clamp and remove this accordion boot here on the air intake. And then, of course, we have to undo all these clips. Uh, getting this thing out is not easy. You kind of have to articulate it and, and put downward pressure on this accordion boot. Uh, to be able to just swing it out of place. Uh, not the easiest thing, but uh, let's get to it. a moment to look inside the throttle body here you can see the butterfly valve and here is where I will be injecting the fogging oil uh, spraying it right in here right down this tube at a higher rpm uh, let's get the engine started all right so we have the engine running and uh, we've let it warm up a bit according to the uh, tech exchange bulletin uh, we have to operate the engine at a fast idle for approximately 2500 rpms so we can do that pretty easily by just uh, using the no wake mode option, uh, close enough, and now we're ready for the spray.
so yeah, it's a good idea. You you know you you want to kill the engine, right? You got the lanyard here that that it's just all so easy to just pull the lanyard. Um, so you want to kill the engine, pull that lanyard, uh, and and do that when the fogging oil is really in there. Good. Uh, of course, you should have the water turned off immediately before that, uh, so that the water doesn't continue running with the engine off. Uh, but that's pretty much the best approach to apply this fogging oil at that high RPM. Leave it in there, let the engine die with a, with a whole bunch of it shot in there in the last few moments. Now we can move on to phase two, which is uh, introducing the fogging oil into the combustion chamber itself. All right, introducing the fogging oil into the combustion chamber is probably one of the easiest things you could do. Uh, of course, you do want to you know, exercise some caution here but uh, pretty simple stuff. And of course, we're gonna start with removing the uh, cover on top of the engine. Be careful of these tabs here. They break pretty easy if you lift it off or they're a little crooked. All right, now it's just a question of removing the bolts on top of each coil pack to lift each coil pack off the engine. Um, I recommend disconnecting the electronics it does make it easier so you can do that all right so these bolts right here on the coil pack is a 10 millimeter Okay, now that you've removed the bolts from each coil pack, you can lift off each coil pack. Just give it a wiggle and it'll pop off. Here's where it grabs and seats over the, the top of the boot. I should say where the boot seats on top of the plug stem, right? Uh, so we can pull those off. I like to keep them in the same order so I know I'm putting each coil pack exactly back in. So let's say, for example, this would be number two. This would be number three. And this would be number four. You got the idea. And anytime you're working on top of the engine here, and, and especially when you're about to remove the spark plugs, you have to be particularly careful that nothing drops in because, uh, yeah, that would, that would ruin your day. All right, here's the plug. Uh, basically, after we introduce the fogging oil into the combustion chamber, we're just gonna reinsert the plugs, reinstall them. And then in the spring, after we start it up and burn off that fogging oil, it's probably overkill, but I replace the plugs. I do it every year. It's cheap maintenance for me. Okay, now we have the plugs all removed and I actually purchased online this uh, extender reach tube uh, for purposes of uh, fogging uh, the cylinders it's great because I'm able to get this red tube all the way down straight into the hole where the spark plug goes in into the top of the head you don't want to spray the fogging oil uh, you know to have it sit right on top in there and not go down into the hole where the spark plug goes in so you got to be very careful you also don't want to turn a can like this with a very small red tube because that red tube could drop down inside and fall in on top of the piston and well then you're in trouble once again so be very careful here okay i've i've got the red tube now down inside the hole where the spark plug goes uh the service uh, i should say the technical bolt in for yamaha calls for five seconds of spray into each cylinder right on top of the piston. Okay, that's one. That's two. Okay, so now that we've introduced the fogging oil into the actual combustion chamber on top of the pistons in each cylinder, right on top of the piston head, 
you know, we are going to now uh, really call it a day, at least according to the technical service bulletin. That's all you need to do. What I like to do, and, and again, you know, just my theory is I just want to cycle that oil a little bit up and down the walls of the uh, cylinders. I'm just going to turn the key for a second. Look, the lanyard is removed. There's no coil packs. There's no plugs. Nothing's going to start. But I'm just going to do it real quick for a second just to cycle that oil. Here we go. Okay, so that's it. We've, we've, you know, we've done what we had to. We've cycled the fogging oil along the walls of the cylinders. Uh, we're ready to put this whole thing back together at this point. And this is how she'll sit for our long-term storage. All right, I think I got everything out of the boat. All the compartments are emptied. That's good. And uh, just cleaning her up. I think that might be a, a wrap at this point and ready to put her away. Um, well, I got to say, full disclosure, I did use antifreeze. Uh, it's what I do. I've been doing it for the last nine years when I winterized my boat. I do a lot of other stuff too. Look, it's just my thing. Uh, you got to find your comfort zone. You got to find what works for you. But what's important and the purpose of this video is just to cover, uh, you know, what is in fact the certified recommendations by Yamaha. As long as you do that, you know, then, then you could say you got it covered. The rest, hey, that's gravy, right? So I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this channel. If you, you're interested in seeing all those in-depth steps that I do for winterization, uh, you can check out my video. Again, it is linked. Uh, hey, maybe I'll throw the link right up here again. Uh, but you know, that's a uh, uh, 70, 80,000 views. That thing's been out for a while now. Um, it's quite extensive and, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, I just want to take a moment to say, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, perhaps you're a brand new Yamaha boat owner. Perhaps you're thinking about buying a Yamaha boat. Uh, I do have a lot of videos that you may find useful. Uh, and I just want to take a moment to wish everybody a very healthy, happy, and safe long storage season. <laughs> All right, everybody take care. Captain Leon signing off.